People have been asking me to explain my latest research, the photobiomodulation therapy and the lymphatic system, promising applications for augmenting the brain lymphatic drainage system. This was in March of last year. People, maybe they know about this lymphatic system and maybe they don't. So let me give you a quick review and then talk to you about how photobiomodulation can affect these things. This research paper was put together with the help of the brilliant group out of Russia who's been doing a great deal of research on the clearance of toxins from the brain by using photobiomodulation. Transcranial photobiomodulation therapy is the application of low levels of red and near infrared light onto the head to stimulate tissues. PBM has been demonstrated to be an effective approach for promoting cellular proliferation and microcirculation and for relieving pain and edema in various traumatic, acute, and chronic diseases. PBM has also been shown to improve brain hemodynamics and increase in cerebral oxygenation along with metabolic capacity. There's an increasing body of evidence to support that PBM therapy of the brain can ameliorate neuronal oxidative stress, neuronal oxidative stress, neuroinflammation and apoptosis while promoting neurogenesis, angiogenesis, and synaptogenesis. That's make more nerves, make more synapses, and make more blood vessels. To date, no serious adverse or side effects have been reported from when you're using brain photobiomodulation therapy. And think of that, that's hundreds of thousands of clinical cases and thousands of research papers. Now the brain's drainage system, so-called glymphatic system was rediscovered only in 2012 and 2013 by Macon Nadergaard from the University of Rochester. She explained how paravascular pathways facilitate CSF flow, cerebral spinal fluid flow, through the brain parenchyma or tissue and the clearance of this interstitial solutes or the waste, including amyloid B protein. But just to give you a quick overview, this is what she has proposed, that the circulating blood acts as a pulsatile, pulsing pressure to push the waste, which is that black material, out of the brain cells and over to the brain's lymphatic system, which is the glymphatic system. And from our paper, the illustrations, I'm gonna go through the one, two, three, four, five of this in a quick overview. So cerebral spinal fluid is continually being manufactured throughout the day. You have about 500 milliliters, or like 150 milliliters, like a water bottle full of cerebral spinal fluid at all time, but this, the you know ventricles and called the choroid plexus or the parts of your brain that makes this is making about a liter and a half a day so it's always circulating and bathing the brain in this fluid and it flows around like this and as it presses through that's number one number two this is the peri arterial influx so around those arteries we showed you the lymphatic fluid pushes through or the cerebral spinal fluid pushes through and it becomes interstitial fluid, goes through the tissue and pushes those black dots out through this paravascular spaces or this dural meningeal lymph vessels, just to let you know. And there it is, it drains out through the lymph, through the nose, through the head, and down through the cervical nuclei and out. Okay, here's a quick example of what it would look like. The blue is the fourth ventricle. You see this little flashing. That's the production or the pulsing, if you will, as it's being produced. And then it circulates through the entire brain. Now, the brain's drainage system is called the lymphatic system because it connects with the lymphatic system with the rest of the body. So there's the meningeal lymphatics and drains out this way and also through the nasal cavity. Now, when you look at this, Again, we're seeing in, on the right-hand side here, the blue is the dural sinus, uh, where that's, it's a sinus system, the penetrating arteries, this is the ventricles, and it's pressing this fluid out so that it eliminates through the cervical lymph nodes in our lymphatic vessels. 
and this is again pushing this black waste products out into these full up functioning functional meningeal lymphatics just recently discovered here's a little video to explain how this does at least from the arteries so these peel arteries small little penetrating arterioles in your brain pulse and as they pulse you can see that they push this fluid out into the system and through the brain tissue and it's moving this waste along the brain's lymphatic system another important part to realize is that this the nasal cavity where it has this little cribriform plate they call it is where a major drainage system is for the glymphatics, these little green dots here. So there's CSF in there, and, and, and it's a connection between the brain and the outside world. It's right through these little, just little, little cribriform, and it looks like a crib. It's got a, like a little cell. So that's where it's abundant for fluid to exit. You can see it again here, the fluid, and it's highlighted in the left-hand one here. And right in here, this is where the this very fine little mesh where fluid and the system can intermingle. Now, in, impaired meningeal lymphatics, they can decrease with age, uh, they can develop uh, in, immune problems, they reduce the drainage of the CSF content, and that reduces the immune system. And this is not really good because you're going to have buildup of waste products in the brain that can accelerate cognitive decline accumulation of toxic proteins that kind of aggregate and clump together. That's a, a, a betas and taus and alkylene. And this has worse outcomes if you have a traumatic brain injury and there's a lot of tissue damage or a stroke. And you're going to have a poor immune response because we looked at this way. That's the what happens. Your meningeals will, lymphatics will atrophy and you're not going to get this pushed through here. And many things can affect it. Vascular health. If you have hypertension, you're not going to have the huge push there. If you have stress, you're not going to have the huge push there. If you don't have good heart beats, you're not going to push that stuff out. So that's why sleep vascular health exercise, and we're going to say photobiomodulation can help because conditions can affect the brain's lymphatic system. Lifestyle, you can see their genetics and pathological conditions like cardiac disease and things like that. So when you have something that decreases your glymphatic output, the drainage out of the brain, you're going to have increased markers of neuroinflammation and neurodegeneration. And they're going to clump together, increase protein concentration, and create more stagnation, make it difficult to overcome the slowing stagnation of the brain's lymphatic system. Now, in January of 2023, they just discovered a new part of the brain's waste disposal system. And it's actually a thin layer of tissue called the subarachnoid lymphatic-like membrane, or SLIME. It keeps fresh cerebral spinal fluid separate from fluid that contains the waste from brain cells, just normal function. And you can see that is it divides the subarachnoid space into functional compartments. So we have the bone, the dura matter, arachnoid matter, as I said, because it looks like arachnoid, looks like a spider. The slime level here, the pia matter, and then the brain. You can just see it right here, and this covers the whole brain. So we have the blood coming up from the neck, pulsating into the arterioles, right? Creating this shift of fluid that eventually will clean the brain. And again, this is the sagittal sinus you can see right here, and the dura mater right there. And here you will see these lymphatic vessels right in that area. That's how it's pushing out the waste products. To see it that way, the CSF pulse, pulsates through the tissue and then removes these waste products you can see through these meningeal vessels. So when you have vasodilation in these small arterioles, you can see that you're going to push more waste you know, through the brain. Higher pressure will go through that brain tissue, the parenchyma, and sift out the waste products that exist. So to even normal thinking. So this is the penetrating arteries that then push this fluid back out so that it can exit through the lymphatic vessels that you see down here. 
photobiomodulation therapy works on many different levels. And one is it creates this vasodilation in the arterioles and, and arterioles that penetrate, which create this flow of water through the CSF, through the system. And it also increases the meningeal lymphatic vessels, vasodilates them. So it has a huge amount of ability to push fluid into the brain and remove fluid from the brain. That's when you put light on the tissue. Again, maybe this will help a little bit more when you see the pulsations are driving this fluid through the brain tissue to move those waste products out of the brain. Again, another little video. See one more time how it happens. It pulses, then it moves through the whole system and then out. So really, you only need to get the light to through the skull to this zone here, and that zone goes all the way around the brain. It's, uh, that's where the meninges are, as we're going to see, right under the surface. So you have a little bit of hair. If you don't have hair, it's better. You have a little bit of skin there, periosteum, the bone, and boom, right into the dura mater where all these functions can happen. It's a very small area, very simple to reach to the water before we even change the cortex. And the intranasal photobiomodulation works excellent to vasodilate the blood vessels and vasodilate the meningeal vessels and the lymph vessels to remove that waste. So the pro-neuro approach is a multimodal segmental approach where you can put transcranial on, intranasal on, and neck pads on there, as well as a body pad, So I'm going to show you in a second. When you see, visualize the brain's lymphatic system, if you want to influence this, you have to put the light in this area. It really is super helpful because that's where the lymphatic system is. And that's why we offer a neck wrap, a body wrap, a head wrap, and a small little piece that you can put up here if you don't have a lot of hair to functionally address these areas. And realize that we use four different wavelengths of light to influence every aspect of this brain drainage system. Okay, so think about it. If you have the light and you put it right next to the brain, right next to the, the, the head, where you're going to have these lymphatic vessels, you have a better chance of influencing the brain's lymphatic system as well as the other brain tissue. So this is the lymphatic system you can see in yellow. And here I've highlighted it in green. It's around the whole brain area here. And that's why you want to put the light where the lymphatic system is because it's going to aid in the drainage if you put the light right there. And that's really the secret of how we're doing this. So just visualize it this way. Look at it this from the top down. That's where the lymphatic system is. That's where you want to put the light. Across the top, around the back here, and down here in the neck, as well as the intranasal part. And that's why we have a multimodal approach. Top of the head, if, the, if you don't have much hair so the light can get through, around the head here, intranasal, around the neck, push and drain as well as the body pad here to move the lymphatic system once it gets to the body. So it improves fluid dynamics by modulating cerebral blood flow and cerebral, cerebral spinal fluid flow. Pushes the blood up and brings that lymph out and drains through the intranasal probes. It reduces cerebral edema of neuroinflammation as well as having the immune response of all this different wavelengths that are affecting the this whole level of the brain, even to the level of the cortex. I'm here if you have any questions, how this works, and shoot me an email and we'll take care of it.